Hey guys, so I realized I had not given you a formal update about the state of the Indiegogo campaign that took place a couple of weeks ago. My bad. Um, my wife and I just left Auckland, so we're in the Airbnb right now. You have to forgive the, the setup. Uh, and I think it took four days before we raised $1,000 for the Indiegogo campaign. So totally exceeded expectations. Thank you all very much for supporting. There was a guy that came in and donated about half of the amount. Um, Four days in you know who you are so thank you very much for that and some of my supporters have been sending me messages like steve don't you know jason brennan's gonna write this unfair super critical review and oh man what are you thinking you know why would you pay him to do this and you guys are taking this way too linearly um i am perfectly aware that jason has a very strong incentive to write as unfavorable a review of my book as possible um, I know that's the case. So maybe step back and look at some alternative explanations for why I want to do this. Um, so let me give you uh, some what I'm actually expecting so that it's cleared up. Here's what I think is going to happen. I imagine, based on my reading of academic work and academic journals, I think there's going to be a lot of focus on minutia. And style, because I violate the rules of academic writing, like I, there's no citations in here. I'm not participating in the conversation. I don't talk about, I mean, I talk about Aristotle uh, briefly, but I don't make any citations. I don't think academics like that. And if his incentive is to try to pick it apart in ways that aren't going to be addressing the actual ideas about the laws of logic, um, that's, I'm sure there will be plenty of examples where he can do that. So he's got 1,200 words to fill. I'm imagining most of them are going to try to be as critical as possible about um, violating academic standards. And even in the introduction of the book, I have, there's a line that says, the reader can rest assured this is not a work of academic philosophy. So I think that's where most of it's going to be. If he does address the actual ideas head on, which would be surprising, but that would be great, um, it's going to be very hard <laughs> to criticize the laws of logic, laws of identity and non-contradiction, and their um, bundling, uh, them being bundled together with existence. Um, the, the theme of the book is that logic and existence are inseparable, and if he actually talks about that, um, I can't imagine what the criticism would be, though it would be interesting to hear it. So I think another route he might take is something like, okay, well, let's acknowledge that, yes, the laws of logic are necessary and certain, and we all presuppose them, but it's trivially true. We, we've known this for thousands of years. This doesn't add anything to the conversation. So I think we might see glossing over the parts of the book which are really tightly reasoned and, uh, I would say, profoundly important to understand. He might just say, yeah, but we already knew that. Um, another option that he might take is, for example, there's a, the, the most difficult part of my book by far is a, the part where I'm talking about the metaphysics of logic, which is a very short section and I don't go into too much detail. But that's an area where maybe you could have an objection, say, oh, I don't like the way that you phrased this here. Totally reasonable. So maybe what he'll do is latch onto that, address it, you know, intellectually, but spend half the review talking about one fairly minor point. I could see that as well. One way or another, I'm imagining it's going to be taking up 1,200 words by either uh, focusing on minutia, focusing on one thing that you can really sink your te teeth into, and skipping over all the good stuff. Um, so that is my expectation, guys. You don't have to. You don't have to worry. I'm aware he has an incentive to do that. Um, yes. Now maybe it's the case that I've made some catastrophic error in my argument that I just didn't conceive of, and oh yes, you can't have a true contradiction. And if that's the case, if he points it out great. It would be embarrassing for me, right? Because I'm claiming the central part of this book is logically airtight and logically certain, and I can know it, that it is true. But maybe I'm wrong. Okay, I've got an open mind. Um, I would benefit greatly from hearing that kind of feedback. Now, I don't really rule out the idea that I'm, my pessimism is misplaced. I've had several people say, oh, Jason Brennan does great work. He's totally intellectually honest. You know, it's, he's going he's gonna to be He's not going to do what I've said in this video. Maybe, maybe that's the case. I mean, I don't, I haven't read that much of the guy's work. I don't know him personally. So, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Then it would be a win all around, and everybody could enjoy his review. But he's agreed to get it done, I think, in the next two weeks now. So I'll make sure to keep you guys updated. Once it's been submitted to a few publishing places, then at some point I will definitely do a 
Jason Brennan review breakdown of his arguments, my responses to his arguments, so that everybody can be on the same page. So thanks everybody so much for supporting the project. Thanks for your concern. <laughs> um, it's been an exciting period of time and let's see what happens.